we're live. I think we are too. I see the red light. Yeah, there's a red light. That flashing. always means good things in uh, this uh, world of streaming. Absolutely. I think uh, so far so good. I want to welcome you guys to the After Hours Agility. You know, last we had to cancel our After Hours Agility last week. You sure did. Because uh, Kale had a uh, TED talk that she had to do. You want to talk about that for a minute? Yeah, I got asked to be part of um, <clears throat> TEDx for McMaster. McMaster was putting on and it was... Um, a day focused on the topic of ambition. So um, I was lucky enough to be approached to talk a little bit about ambition and uh, about uh, ambition and um, sort of my life and some of the accomplishments I've made and um, just a little bit about how I've grown up, um, you know, in a family of dogs and stuff and, um, and, just, and dog trainers. Know, dog trainers. Not just dogs. Yeah, that would be an interesting I was, story. I too. was raised by dogs. Yeah, that would be. Really I didn't have parents. I'm really, really quite peculiar. Um, anyways, no, it was really, really cool. It was awesome. Um, it went really well. They actually will be posting my talk on the YouTube uh, channel, the TEDx YouTube channel, in January. I think they have to do some editing, so uh, we will be sure to share it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's good. <laughs> Now, uh, we want to welcome everybody to the channel. I know we have a lot of our McCann Dogs uh, uh, subscribers that may have just uh, come over to the Agility channel. Maybe you're new to Agility, but I bet we have lots of people that are old pros. Yeah. You know, the pro lots of people that know their way around the Agility course. Tell us a little bit of what we're going to be talking about tonight. Yeah, so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about a skill in Agility that is super popular, and it's called a backside send. And um, for those of you who aren't as familiar with Agility, basically – normally you would take a jump front side so in flow in the direction that seems the most obvious but uh, often on course um, the judge will put the course number on the opposite side of the jump so the dog actually has to take the jump backwards and uh, this actually requires a lot of skill on the dog's part and um, what I have done with my own dogs over the years is I've taught them to do this behavior quite independently um, and this allows me to send my dog to go and take an obstacle without really needing to be there with them and they will go and um, and perform it on their own um, but there's quite a bit of training involved uh, in terms of teaching the dog how to actually perform the jump safely and fast efficiently as well and then also how to do it a little bit more on their own uh, in the last three years or so I've actually taught my dogs how to do um, several backside send performances on different behaviors so if I say one word they'll take the backside and perform one behavior if I say a different command they'll take the backside and do a totally different behavior um, it's not something I've done with um, other dogs but with my youngest dog beeline which I'll be using to demonstrate tonight I just sort of as a, an experience experiment I wanted to see if a dog was capable of learning different behaviors on the back side of a jump they can do it on a front side jump uh, so I did that and um, she really is figuring it out so now I'm doing it with my my students dogs and um, it's working really well uh, what I'm also going to do though is talk about some problem solving so if you're an agility person out there and you've been doing some backside sends but you're running into some problems whether your dog's not jumping well or they're knocking the bar they're cutting the wing too close they're not committing um, I'm going to share with you a couple tricks that I do with my dogs to make sure that those things don't happen so I have my own dogs here that obviously know how to do the behaviors and then hopefully at some point I've asked one of my instructors my obedience instructor she's actually an agility student of mine to bring her young border collie over that does not have any of these skills um, so that I can show you guys on a dog that doesn't really know what, what he's doing um, I also have my poodle here who I always say doesn't really know a lot about agility and then I use her as a demo dog and then she just like does stuff so she makes a liar pretty out cute. of me. She is. She's pretty, adorable. Pretty darn But yeah, cute. that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm stoked for it. So with no further ado, I'm Ken Steep. I'm Cal McCann. And welcome to McCann Dog. Okay, so uh, welcome to the channel, Game on BCs. This is, uh, I, I, you know, I caught me off guard a little bit. I've forgotten that we are, aren't actually on McCann Dog's channel. We're actually on the McCann Dog's agility channel. Oh, is that what the problem was? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I wasn't thinking for a minute, and I said, welcome back to McCann Dog's, but that's not the case. Welcome we back a, we need a to new, McCann like, Dog's uh, agility. Cut line. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's, um, can we jump into the training? I've got some things to do here to try to get this up and running. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. I don't know yeah. what, maybe you can sort of preface with, uh, let's see if there's any comments. Yeah, or see where people are coming. Do you have the comments up where we can see um, them? We don't. That's the problem we've got right now. Oh, you know what? Okay. Uh, Why don't I just how about this? show you some stuff? How about this? How about we find out where you're watching from? Yeah. Let's do a little bit of a roll call. See, I need, I, I have the train. You know what would be awesome? Is if we could read where they're coming from. Yeah, and, I, and we can if I, if I go over here. 
Uh, I can see. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. So, ah, look at it. Now I can see what you're saying. Good. All right, you guys can see it. A couple people are asking. Super excited about backsides. Oh, hi, Sandy. Uh, Sally's on. I have a couple people. Julia Short. I have actually a couple people that are taking my online class here. Oh, here we go. Colorado, Houston, Texas, Illinois, oh, got it. New York, North Carolina, Florida. We're headed to Florida very shortly. Um, Oak Bank, Fort Myers. Hi, Nicole. How's it going, girl? Lilia from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, Lilia. She, she came over from the Can Dogs channel. Oh, Actually, sweet. North she's Carolina. She's on your Patreon as well, I believe. Sally watching from Memphis, South Carolina. We have a lot of uh, North and South Carolinas going on right mm. now, which is awesome. I've never been to North Carolina, but I've been one. to Denise, South Carolina. Denise so from New Zealand. Sweet. Yeah, very cool. Super cool. Thanks for joining us. That's awesome. So a really uh, bit, bit of a different Maryland, setup. Maryland, awesome. A bit of a different setup for us today. So cool. this is going to be where our comments will be. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I think. Uh, okay, um, I'm just going to go grab my dog and then kay. I'm going to show a few things. For sure. Um, I'm, I'm pumped to see you guys all here. As you know, if you've seen the train station before, if you've seen any of our McCann Dogs live shows, I'm trying to break the system. Basically, I'm always trying something new, something a little bit different, uh, but I wouldn't be able to take these kinds of chances if it wasn't from uh, some key help. And tonight, you, you might know this guy over here, Dan, the man Luton, and his wife, Ellen. So Lots of Links Luton is sitting there beside his wife, Ellen, and those two uh, help us out a bunch for a, a lot of the stuff we do uh, online. Ellen's actually working in our office now as well, which is really cool, so it's really fun to have her. But if you see somebody in the chat, uh, Dan's there to drop links, see what he can do to uh, clarify questions. Super helpful to have uh, you know these guys really supporting us to bring you into the action with these live shows. Um, but I see, you know, I see people also jumping in. Tyler Kendall saying from Toronto, Tammy Gallagher from Montreal oh, with my wine. I, I love that point. Maria Miller here from Maryland. Tammy Very and I cool. were talking about starting a new series called Wine and Train. Oh, okay. Let's yeah. talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. What's that all about? <laughs> well, it was just sort of a joke. It's that we would sounds dangerous. We would have a show where we drink wine together, and then I show off agility things. <laughs> yeah, but then I said that I don't think my training in agility would be very good. <laughs> that yeah. might be the case. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so we're talking a little bit about um, backside sense tonight, guys. And um, what I had mentioned at the beginning of the chat, some of you might not have been on quite yet, is um, I actually teach my dogs two different behaviors. Um, one to take the backside and slice and the other one to take the backside and do a wrap. And why I've taught this as two different behaviors is the dog's takeoff spot in some cases is gonna be really different. When you want your dog to do a wrap, the dog actually needs to square up and um, take the, the jump a little bit more straight on. Naturally, what a dog wants to do is take the jump and do the slice. So that's actually not something you have to train as much, although we're gonna talk about problems that arise with that particular behavior. Um, but the wrap is gonna be really, really important. It takes a little bit more training. Um, so I think maybe what I'll do is I'll just sort of show you um, the two behaviors just so you kind of know what I'm, I'm looking for here. Um, and then I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how I break some of those things down. So um, initially when I taught my dogs to do a backside, I used the command, which is, this is absolutely ridiculous, but my backside command in, originally was moo, 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 moo. That is absolutely ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. And it stems from like, I don't know, like 18 years ago or something. Um, anyways, long story. It's not important. But I just stuck with it because it was silly and it was easy for the dog to hear. I could say it very quickly back to back. So I've kept that command as my wrap cue. So backside wrap. If I want my dog to take a backside and slice across the bar, then I use the command get back, get back, get back, and I'll repeat it so the dog understands what I'm doing. So I'm just going to show you a little bit the difference between the two. Is when that I'm, a Beatles reference? What? Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back to where you once belong. Is Add that what some it flavor. Is? Add some flavor to is the Is that the right lyric? Yeah. I think yeah, it is. Yeah, that's right. Good job, hon. I'm going to do my um, best. So what I want you to do is... Take special note of my positional cue when I'm practicing it. And I also want you to take a look at where B takes off and lands for the two jumps. Um, and um, 
this is for me this is something that's always in a work in progress so if i'm like tending to work on slices quite a bit i do see her wrap cue start to sort of weaken a little bit and if i'm doing tons of wraps then i see her takeoff spot for the slice start to change a little bit so this is like a maintenance thing to me this isn't one of these things that you train you know a little bit and then it sticks with the dog forever it's it's a maintenance thing and as those of you who run agility know you're not going to do the same style of jump all of the time it's always switching and there's going to be some dogs that are more naturally capable of doing one or than the other. Um, B is a natural slicer. <laughs> she is not a natural rapper. She started off uh, quite bendy and rappy as a young dog, but as she turned on to agility and became more impatient because she's a little bit high, um, she didn't want to be setting herself up for the rap as much. She just wanted to kind of power herself through. So I had to work a lot on getting her to uh, take the jump properly. So watch the dog, watch me, and then I'm going to break things down a little bit. Hey, so uh, really quickly, Denise O has a great question. She asks, is it too late to go back Oops, and change again. and train the two different sides? Yeah, retrain the two different backsides. No, I don't think so. I obviously think it's a little bit harder. If you've been doing one thing for a long time and the dogs uh, learned that a little bit, it certainly um, is a little bit harder. Um, there could be some foundation skills that I show you tonight that really might help the dog to understand there is a difference. Um, the way that I train them and, and reward is so different from one another that it does help the dog to realize that they're, they are two separate behaviors. So I de definitely think it's worth a try. It just might take a little bit longer. This is something that I've done with this dog um, from the very beginning. So um, she has learned two separate cues from right from the start. Um, but with many of my students' dogs who didn't do this prior, um, we've still been working on it and the dogs are starting to get it. So I, I think it's possible. It just takes a little bit longer. Now, really quickly, I see some people dropping uh, exclamation point agility coaching club, Dan the man included. And if you're wondering what on earth <laughs> is that that they're talking about, Kale's actually got a Patreon where she shares uh, her agility Yay. lesson uh, training plans. We, we actually have a coaching call tomorrow yeah. with the Patreon, uh, the patrons from her Patreon. So if you're interested in online agility training, if you're looking for a little bit more help with whatever you're working on, wherever you are in the world, then check out that link that you'll see in the chat. Just so that people aren't like, what on earth is this stream elements thing? But yeah, that's what that is. we'll talk about it a little bit more throughout the night. So if you want a little bit more information, we can explain it a little bit more thoroughly. But uh, once a month, I do like a video call kind of like this, but it's more specific to the people who are in the group. Yeah. Um, we ask, they ask questions. I do specific demonstrations for them and we talk about goals and problem areas and those types of things. This is obviously a more general live stream because we get all kinds of people on it. The one that we're going to do tomorrow is more specific to people who are actually in the group. Yeah. She's found the yeah, She's found file. the treats. You yeah. know what that means. I think it's time to head on over okay, to the... Okay, find a toy. What, what are we heading on find over to? Find a toy. To? This red jump right here. Okay. Well, it's not that Check. exciting as saying head on over Check. to the train station Check. and me tooting whistle. But you know what? Check. It's going to be Check. exciting once we get Check. her going. So let's head on over and see what Kel's up to. Whoops. we got to head on over first. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of uh, work with the both here. So I'm going to just work at get back first. So I want her to just slice across the bar. I would use this anytime she needs to take the backside and then slice across regardless of the exit line. So even if she's exiting parallel to the jump or if I'm going forward, um, her job is to take the backside and then slice across. I want you to notice that when I tell her to take the back, after I see that she's committed to the backside, I no longer help her anymore. It's her job to complete the, the jump independently. Um, I just take off and go and she's got to go back for the jump. And that took me a long time to work on and I'll tell you how, how I did that. But I want you to see that there's not a lot of managing. There's a lot of um, self-responsibility uh, self on the dog's part. Ready? Get back, get back, get back, get back. Yes, good girl. So I tell her, get back. I see the commitment and then I take off. The girl, I try another one of those. So, Kel, we can't really see the blue uh, wing where it is. Maybe talk a little bit about why you're doing that. Or oh, like yeah. It. I'm just using the blue. The blue wing's not really important. It's just basically to create um, some momentum so she's not just starting at my side. But this is the jump that's the most important. Okay. Get back, get back, get back, get back. Yes, good girl. So she takes the jump and then she moves from side from there. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to work a little bit on the, um, the wrap. Oh, for a sec. Oh. oh, she is very excited. She's been listening to the other dogs. It, yes! 
Okay, my dog is so brilliant. She's offering a square up, and I'll show you this in a minute why she's doing this, but what's happening is I was literally about to tell you about how my positional um, cue is going to change to be more like this. When I stand here, she's learned to come and straighten up, which is why she offered to come and straighten up because she's so kind. You're so good, little girl. So the last one, my chest was more forward. I was stepping out, I was moving laterally. This one, if I'm gonna wrap and keep going, my body's gonna be more towards the direction that I'm going and she should square up a little bit more. Okay, ready? Move, 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 move. Yes, good girl. So I wanted to wrap around that jump and then take off from there. Again, I don't want to stay and help her. I want her to take it a little bit more independently. Oh, you're good. Ready? Set. Move, 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 move. Yes, good girl. So when I see her actually square up even more, like she was better that time than the time before, and I know it's happening really fast, so you might not be able to tell. Um, what I'm looking for when I do this is where she takes off. So she actually took off from here that time. The time before she was like a tiny bit slicey. I'm being super nitpicky here. But when she makes a really good turn, you'll notice my cheering was even um, bigger that time than the time before. Okay, now when I'm working this, out. Um, again, I have my two different, oh, stop, 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 my two different, oh, here, here, you know who that is, sit. I have my two different commands, so I have my get back and then I have my moo moo moo. But what I want to talk to you now about is just a little bit about some of the um, proofing um, exercises that I do. So I'm going to show you a little bit with B, and then um, my demo dog has just arrived. And then I'll show you a little bit with Levi, who's a young border collie. He has done a backside jump before, but he doesn't know any of the specific behavior. So I'll really be able to break it down and show you some problem solving skills, skills with him and some development stuff. So for the backside slice, one of the things that I really want to work on is making sure that the dog can go and find the backside um, from any direction. So I will play, okay, I will play lots of games, like come in certain spots here, ready? Set, get back, get back, get back, yes. Now, when I reward her, see the placement of my toy, I allow her to slice across the bar, okay, go. and then I can reward her from there. Now I'm gonna just change positions, ready? Get back, get back, whoops, she does it wrong, no reward, switch, 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 get back, whoops. Okay, she's done it wrong twice, B, wait. <laughs> yeah, get back, get back, get back, yay, good girl. I don't actually have to wait till B takes the jump before I reward. I can actually praise her before she goes. Ready, set, get back, get back. Oopsie. Switch. Get back. Nope. Switch. Get back, get back. Get back. Get back, get back. Yay! Good girl! So I'm playing a little proofing game with her now. I'm basically working on getting her used to the verbal so I don't actually have to step. If I was to step and send her here, switch. Get back. Sit. I shouldn't have said get back there, sorry. If I did this, get back, get back, get back, and I sent with my arm and foot, she's gonna go every single time. Come here, give me that ding. So I'm just testing her a little bit. Can she go and find it, even though I'm not helping her as much? Ready, set, get back, get back, yay! That's my girl. So I can work all around the clock to make it really challenging. Here, me, help up. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on teaching her to stay committed to the jump. So back in the day when I was doing um, handling specifically tailored towards like one mind dogs, which I still do 90% one mind dogs, but um, when I was doing a lot of all my dogs, I would teach her to commit to the jump when I would use my opposite hand and I no longer do that. My dog, I only use my opposite hand with her if I intend to never blind after. If I just send her to the backside and I don't put any arms up, um, she always knows, she always knows that I'm gonna blind after. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna test her ability to commit. So this time, when I tell her to get back, I'm gonna run in a different direction. When I see that she's committed to the jump, I'm gonna say yes, and then I'm gonna throw her toy. You could also use a clicker here if you really wanted to as well. Okay, ready? So this time I'm gonna try and pass the plane of the jump. Ready, set, get back, get back, get back, get back. Yes, good girl. So I can yes her as I run away, and I want her to take the jump no matter what. So now I'm gonna make it harder, I'm gonna run in a different direction. Ready, set, get back, get back, get back, get back, get back. Yes, good girl. So no matter where I run, she needs to take the jump the same side. I'm gonna try the other side now. Ready, get set, 
Get back, get back, get back, get back. Yes, good girl. So again, this is all about teaching her to do this independently. Now, when I show you this with Levi later, he won't be able to do this, so I'll show you what to do if they can't do it. Okay, now, when out, I'm working on the wrap part, what I do a ton of on the wrap is teaching her to square up for the bar. So when I first teach this weight, what I will do is I'll have food in my hand that's closest to the jump. I'm gonna send her to the back. Moo, 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 Yes. And I'm gonna yes and reward her for being perpendicular to the bar. This is really, really important. What I don't wanna do is reward her like this. I'm gonna swing her out, yes. And I'm gonna reward her from there. Now, B's very experienced at this. I do this a lot, so I have to jump at 16. If I was first starting out, I would put the jump way down to make it really easy. Okay. Sit. Wait. Wait. Okay. Move, 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 move. Yes. So she squares up really easily because she gets rewarded so much. Stand. Stand. That's a good girl. Now, once she can do that, I can start to add um, jumping technique. So I could open up. Okay. And I can reward her. Or I could move, 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 move. Yes. Yes, and I could get her to turn over the bar. So I can try all kinds of little finessey things. Let's try this side. Sit. Wait. So again, food in this hand. This is the hand that's closest. Moo, 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 moo. Yes. So I square her up. Good girl. Okay. Yes. And then I can reward from there. I, when I'm teaching this, I like to use food. I don't like to use a toy because I can manipulate the dog's head a little bit more to help her with a proper performance. Um, with her, since this is one that's more challenging for her, I will sometimes do things like, I have a lot of props off, off screen here. Um, I will sometimes do things like this. So I will put a pole in the um, middle of the bar so that when she comes around, I'll show you, she has to jump this side of the bar. She can't slice it, so I'll show you with that in. Ready, set. Moo, 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 moo. Yay! Good girly. So see how much she squares up to kind of avoid that? Good girl. The other thing that I'll do, out, is I'll use her toy reward to help her. So I'm going to put the toy down here, okay, so she can see it. Now she has to pass it in order to get the reward, ready? Moo, 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 moo. Yes, get it. Good girl. And then I can tell her to get it as she goes by. The toy there, causes her to come in, drop her head, put her head uh, down a little bit, so she actually ends up wrapping a lot tighter. So that's one thing that I'll do. Another thing that I'll sometimes do, so I don't do one thing exclusively, is I will put a plunger, because it's not really easy to see until the dog gets there, I'll put that in the takeoff zone. So if she comes around, she can't take off there. She has to square up, and I can use that to, to teach her to do this. One thing that's really important, so something like this, I would not typically use this type of technique with a dog that um, has already learned it. This is not really something that's gonna fix your problem in my experience. It will prevent the dog from rehearsing it poorly, but it's not necessarily gonna fix your problem. Um, they're great when it's in, and as soon as you take it out, they have a hard time again. Beeline learned this exercise, with this in so right from the beginning she would never learn to do it wrong because there was always a prop in there shaping her and molding her behavior if your dogs are having issues you're going to find that coming in and rewarding from your hand is really what's going to fix it you also could use this uh, method as well because the dog um, will come around and if they take off in the wrong spot they're going to bump into the thing um, obviously don't just throw it in in the middle of the sequence and surprise them. We certainly don't want any dogs getting hurt, but this is going to be more of a fix. This is a, a prevention. This is not a fix though, um, in my experience anyways, because when you take it out, the dog can't really hold it. Okay. I've like talked a lot. So maybe if you have questions. Um, no, I think you, okay, you keep going. Uh, okay. Oh, you know, maybe just mention if uh, you're watching this from a Facebook link, you won't get access to the chat. That's yes, all the good, good point. Happens. If you have clicked this link um, directly from Facebook, which I would imagine lots of you are because I have lots of Facebook um, watchers out there, you probably won't be able to um, ask any questions in the chat. So if you get out of Facebook and then you go into YouTube directly just in your Safari browser or Chrome or whatever it is, 
uh, and then go to the YouTube channel that way, you'll be able to ask questions and then anything that you write will be able to see and I'll be able to answer. So if you do have questions about anything, make sure you post them in the comments. Um, Dan can see them, Ken can see them, and then he can let me know and then I can answer them for you. Um, okay, maybe I'll get the baby dog out now. That's fun. Okay. Do you want to just yeah. entertain them for a second? Oh, I'm very entertaining. See what happens when I hit this button. Um, okay, so it brings us back here. So uh, I see a couple of questions. Okay, a couple of great questions are coming in. Now, if you, um, as Kale mentioned, if you clicked a Facebook link, you're not going to see the chat. There's a lot of uh, interesting stuff happening here in the chat. So make sure you go back out, go into YouTube, and uh, look up McCann Dog's Agility. Um, a great question from Denise Oh, She asks, Tip for, tips for starting the blind while supporting the backside. Is that something you'll talk about maybe in this um, demo? Tips for starting the blind while supporting the backside. Um, short answer is if you're supporting the backside, if you have to support the backside, it means that you need to train a little bit more of a backside before you worry about adding blind. So um, you should be able to send to the backside and have lots of time to get a blind in without having to support the jump. So there could be a bit of a commitment. Um, issue I don't like to say the word issue that's such a negative word but um, there could be like a little bit of a hole there um, when I do a blind I actually just start thinking about the blind before she's even taken the backside and I'm confident that she'll still take it because of all of the um, proofing exercises that I've done um, where I will stay connected with the dog longer before blinding has to do with um, what type of exit line I want. So the more collection I want after the wrap, the later I will blind. So um, we have we have a couple different terms that we use. Like if we say backside blind versus like a German turn, for example. Um, my students know that it's a totally different exit line and your timing of the blind is really different and the dogs really understand the difference as well, whether they should wrap the, the wing tight or whether they should just go in whatever direction you happen to blind on. Um, from Canon Peters, actually, you know, I, I can... Sally. Or so, yeah, I think I can bring it up in the chat here. All right, let's go uh, Melinda Miller first. Which one do you suggest teaching first? I want to start introducing backsides, but don't want to go crazy with it since we don't see backsides in competition for a while. We just moved to open level AKC. Yeah, um, I wouldn't suggest teaching one first over the other. I would suggest teaching both at the same time. Um, you don't want to really strengthen one and then start to switch to the other. Um, some dogs will learn one really easily and have trouble with more and if you happen to choose one that the dog's already really natural at and then that becomes so strong that then you try to switch it on them it can be a bit more of a challenge so i would suggest doing a little bit of both and train them both at the same time what i tried to do with my own dogs is start to evaluate very quickly which one my dog is more natural at and then i keep strengthening the opposite one so that they both grow in development at um evenly so I don't end up getting really good one thing and then not so good the other because um, typically if they're really good at one thing sometimes it can cause the other um, slice or wrap or whatever it is to have more issues so same time fast answer same time yeah um, Sally asks does verbal moo moo mean to go to backside square up and wrap the jump would yes. you use moo moo if you were not wrapping but taking a jump from the backside but changing direction. Um, I use moo 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 means that I want her to swear up before she takes the backside. It has nothing to do with which direction we go in next. It has to do with how much turn is required for her um, before or after the jump. Um, so if I was doing a blind after, if I was doing a landing side front cross, if I was doing a reverse wrap, I would still use the moo 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 command. For her, it means take the backside and square up on your turn. Um, where we go after that, it, it's not as particular. And then if I say get back, she knows it's always going to be a uh, backside and then slicing across the bar again, whether she stays on the landing side of the jump or whether she, whether she continues turning and going to the uh, takeoff side of the jump. Um, that doesn't matter. My handling will be what tells her those things, mm. but what it does is it helps her to determine how she should take off for the jump. That's the idea of teaching two different ones. It's a good question. Though. Yeah, it is. Julia Short, uh, how do you build them taking the backside independently? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a good segue. Speaking of segues. Yes. Now I'm going to um, try this again. Am I going to break? I may break. Is you ready to head over? Yeah, I'm okay. ready. I just want to, I've been fiddling with stuff. Let's we'll see if we can get this to work. See what happens when I do that. No, it's just still on me. I mean... I want to see me, but I think you guys are probably here for some uh, agility action. So let's uh, head on over and see what Kale's up to. Now, Levi is not Kale's dog. Levi is Instructor Kim's dog, who you actually saw if you were on the McCann Dogs channel. It was uh, first week home with your new puppy, 
or maybe first day home with your new puppy, Instructor Kim had Levi. So, uh, and if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Yes. Yes, good boy. Okay, I just wanted to make sure he'll work for me. Okay, Miss Kim, what's your backside command that you're using so far? Uh, push. Push, okay. So, what we're talking about tonight is, come here, buddy is teaching the dog um, a like wrap backside cue versus a slice backside cue. So do you think you would prefer to use push for your wrap cue or your slice cue? No, I need to get back for slice. Ah, see, she's already ahead of the game, guys. She's <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna work a little bit on push first. So I'm gonna just show you a little bit of that squaring up. What I'm actually gonna do first is just, I'm just gonna take him for a spin here and I'm gonna see like kinda what he knows and where his little faults are because then I can kind of show you what I need to do. So I'm going to say, ready, set, push, 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 push. Oops. Oh, good. Here, lie down. Wait. So he's a little bit high. Now, the problem with him here, number one, he's just super excited. Lie down. Wait. He's super excited, so I'm not going to reward him for that. Um, but he's coming in really tight to the jump. So I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt. We've never worked together. I'm going to see what he does. If he does that again, then uh, he requires the food reward. Okay, buddy. Yay. Ready? Set. Push, 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 push. Yay! There you go. Good boy. Bring your team. Bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. Hey, hey, hey. Bring it here. Bring it here. Yes. Good. Okay, ready? Get set. Wait. Wait. Push, 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 push. Yes, good boy. Okay, so he's doing a good job. One thing that I don't like, here, Lee, bring it. Ah, 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 bring it here. Yes, good boy, out. Is I don't like that he's touching the bar. And because what this does is it will lead to, uh, to bar knocking. So I'm gonna switch to food for a second. And I'm just do, gonna do a couple wait there where I just reward him for squaring up. No. <laughs> Sit. Wait, my friend. Push, 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 push. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, wow. good boy. Okay, we get to talk a little bit about dog training here. Yeah. He's so high, which is awesome. He's obviously going to be very fast. But when I train a dog that's this high, I need to teach him to be mindful. Because I'm standing here, he's like, lady, you're in my way, so this is the next fastest direction. So I'm just going to work on getting him to come in, sit, and just being calm-minded and being rewarded for coming to me. Push, 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 push. Yes, I'm going to square him up. Yes, my friend. Oh, that's so good, my wiggles. Okay, I'm not going to let this dog jump because that's exactly what he wants to do. So I'm going to do the office. Wait, opposite, wait. Yes, you're so good, handsome. Good. Push, 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 push. Yes. So look, he squared up on his own that time. Levi, you're so smart. Pretty sure you've done a little bit of this with him already, eh? Yeah, okay. I can tell because normally they're not that good at it. <laughs> Levi, you ready? Oh, you little sneaker. Sit. Okay, wait. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to square him up. I'm not going to feed him and then I'm going to let him jump and I'm going to actually make him land at my side so he has to use a bit more thoughtfulness. Push, 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 push. Yes, I'm just going to put the food on his nose. No treat. Oops. <laughs> that was very graceful. Come here. Try that again. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Nope. Come here. Hey, hey, hey. Don't do that. Stop. Good. Okay. Yes! That is so good! Push, 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 push. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good boy. Okay. Push, 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 push. Yes. You see, I'm squaring him up. Good boy. Okay. Ah, ah. Nope. So if he knocks the bar, no reward. He's got to be careful about those things. Good boy, Levi. <laughs> He's so good. Good. Okay. Nope. No ticking allowed. Come here. Okay. Yes! Good! Get it, get it, get it. Right here. Yay! That was so good! Good boy. Okay. So I really rewarded him because I felt like he made a really valiant effort to keep his back feet up. Um, in order to get over the bar. So I'm going to move on to a different thing now. I could continue practicing this with him, but I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to work a little bit on the backside slice. This one's really difficult to work on commitment. So again, I'm just going to give it a try. Okay, good boy. Um, get back. Oh, that's good. That's what I say, and I won't say the wrong thing. Ready, set. Get back, get back, get back. Yes, good boy. Okay, perfect. So this is what a lot of young dogs do. Tap, tap. Nope, down here, tap, yes, touch, sorry. 
got to get all your words right. Um, so this is what a lot, a lot of young dogs do. They come around, they say, Mom, you're taking off, you're running, I just want to chase you. So I'm going to try it again. This time what I'm going to do is I'm not going to race quite so much, and I'm going to look for commitment from him. And when he commits to the jump, I'm going to throw the toy and reward him behind me. Ready? Set. Get back, get back, get back. No, lie down. Wait. Good boy. Good man. But I'm just going to... Put the jump back together. <laughs> Good. Okay. Get back, get back, get back. Yay! Come on, buddy. Yeah! That was so good. So I just sort of slow my motion down a little bit to help him. That was good. Oh. Wait. Get back, get back, get back. Yes! Good boy! Okay, so two in a row. Here, buddy, bring. Be my come. Drop. Drop it. Yes, good boy. Okay, now I'm going to push the limits a little bit. I'm suspecting he's going to make another error, so I'm just going to show you a couple other things I can do to help him. You're so good, buddy. Dig, 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 dig. Get back, get back, get back. Yes, good boy. So if he decides to chase me, I stop running because that's exactly what he wants. Here, bud. He wants to do, he wants to chase me. So I'm going to stop moving, let him take the jump. But you'll notice I didn't reward him because I don't want him to learn to come to me and then take the bar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to force him to be successful because I don't want him to learn to do this the wrong way. And there's a couple different ways that I can do this. Um, the first way is to use some nets. So I'm going to get the nets out. I'll show you a couple different things. Come here, my love. So I'm going to put the nets like this. He's sending to the backside really good. Oh God, I picked a really bad net. There we go. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is put the toy here. Are you ready? Set. Dig, 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 dig. Get back, get back, get back. Yes, good boy. Now my running wasn't that hard there. I was trying to make sure he didn't impale himself. Come here, come on, I can make it harder. Drop, good boy. Leave it, leave it. Okay, put my toy there. Again, I have it on the landing side to make it easier. I'm going to progress it to the front side in a sec. Are you ready? Switch. Dig, 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 dig. Get back, get back, get back. Yes, good boy. So he was coming around a little fast. He didn't take the jump great, but he was like, oh gosh, I need to be careful about jumping. Levi, you're so smart. Come here, we're going to make it a little harder. Out. So now what I'm going to do, wait, is I'm going to take the toy and I'm going to put it on this side. So now I'm going to ask him for a tighter turn around the wing. These nets are here for two reasons. Number one, they're helping to shape his jumping line so he's got a nice slice. The other thing it is doing is helping him to come around and not directly go to the toy. Okay, if your dog's done a lot of toy in the groundwork and they know not to get it until you release them to it, you could certainly do that as well. But I think this is for him is nice pressure to get him thinking about committing it before. Ready? Dig, 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 dig. Get back, get back, get back. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Hey, come here. Look what you did to the net, you turkey. That's going to be replayed on Facebook for sure. <laughs> That's There's already memes created. Luckily, we have a lot of uh, rubber oh, in the net. grass. In spare net. Okay, come here. You big fat head. So that's not that uncommon for a dog to like no, for drive through the net. No, a young dog for sure. But that's also why, like these nets, they're not really going to stop the dog, right? Okay, come here, buddy. Come on, start again. Levi, bring, 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 bring. Levi, Levi, bring. Get your toy, Lee. Come on. Are you supposed to say He's just like, come here, come here, come here. Yeah. Hey. Yes. Here. Ready? Here. Come on. Give it a try. Try again. We're going to try it again. Okay. Because I wanted to be successful, I'm just going to break it down. Come here, Lee. Right here. So I'm not going to do the backside send. Hard here. Come here. Sit. No. Sit. Good. Wait. Good boy. Good. Okay. Yes! Get it. Good boy. Here. Yay! Good. I just want to show him a couple times here. So A, I don't get killed. And two, he doesn't get killed. Come here. Sit. Sit. Um, on the floor, young man. 
Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Yes! Okay, can you do it? Can you do it? Come here. Outing. Outing. Give me a little fishy. Come here. Ready, ready? Here. Here. Yes. Yes. Good. Calm him down a bit. Dig, 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 dig. Get back, get back, get back. Yay! <laughs> and that was thoughtful, too. Good boy. So good. Okay, one more. Out. Levi, that was excellent. Come here. Ready? No, no, no. Wait. Dig, 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 dig. Get back, get back, get back. Yes! Excellent! Good boy. So you notice when he gets around the jump, I'm not helping him. I'm connecting with him with my eyes, but I'm not telling him jump. I'm not flailing my arms. I'm making him learn to do this independently. And then I, what I could do is start to reduce the gates. I could start to change the toy. I could start to make progressions. But this is definitely what this dog needs because he's got a lot of chase. But that's exactly why he's probably going to be a super fast agility dog. I love dogs like this personally. This is the kind of dog I like to train because you get a lot of speed. But it also means that you cannot let them chase you. The other thing that's really important about this kind of dog is I don't want to let him come past, let him take the jump and then be rewarding those things because he's so smart, he'll start putting that together. I need to shape and mold him so that he's doing the performance correctly each and every time. That was brilliant, young man. Good boy. Okay, maybe we'll take a break for a minute? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Ooh, this is so go good. Yes, good boy. Good for you. Yeah. Now, as you guys saw, agility is not for the faint of heart. You need to be ready for anything. And uh, I think that, that was uh, pretty pretty impressive <laughs> to see Levi crash through those nets and directly into Kale. Now, that's going to hurt tomorrow. <laughs> truth be told, that's not the first time I've ever seen that, especially in an agility class. That's not the class. first time I've been, like, taken out um, by dogs. Right. You know what? The sport is not for the faint. Yeah. You have to... Yeah, anyways, saying, he's not worried about. The dog's just learning though. Like he's not doing it on purpose. He literally is just trying to go as fast as he freaking can, and he needs to just figure it out. He did yeah. awesome, actually. Um, from Maureen Michaud, let's see here. Uh, yeah, Maureen Michaud asks. Uh, so did you just? Oh, What's do we that? need Le Levi anymore? Um, I don't know. Um, so did you say that when you square him up, you don't feed the food just after he jumps? Uh, no. For a long time, if I'm doing this, I always feed before the jumps, and then I also feed after the jumps. So, um, yeah, it's um, – what's going on? I'm just – if Kim – Oh, well, well, I don't know if we want to do more demos or not. Um, oh, water. Okay, yeah. Um, Yes, feed before the jump marine uh, for the dog squaring up. Not until the dog is sort of squaring up naturally. The reason why I made a progression so quickly with Levi is Kim's already done a lot of that work. He was squaring up almost instantly. Um, if you're just starting this with a dog for the first time, it does not happen as smoothly as that. You have to like manipulate them and help them a little bit more. So once they start to figure that out, you can then make the progression to not feed in front of the bar. But that's um, not a step I would rush. Uh, I still feel like Beeline's really good at it, and I still probably do rewards in front of the jumps like every couple of weeks. Um, actually, one of the little comments I made on my paper here is once the dog knows the behavior, I still maintain it. So if I know that I have a really hard wrap on a course that I'm training on, whether I'm training on my own or I'm in class, I will pre-plan before I start which wrap jumps I'm going to stop and reward her. So I will race like a million miles an hour through the course and I'll get to the wrap jump. I'll flip my wrist and then I'll reward her in front of the bar and I won't let her jump. And it surprises the heck out of her. But it keeps her thinking about squaring herself up and being more mindful. Again, the reason why I do that with a dog like her, like my dog or a dog like Levi, is because they're very high drive and they need to be me meant to be more mindful so that they're doing a good job. Um, if you have a dog that you're working on motivation and speed, this is not something that I would, I would never reward the dog for stopping. I would just work on drive, 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 drive. But for high drive dogs specifically, like the one I was working tonight, that's a really good thing. Um, Agile Border Terriers, do you ever use one of those clear plexi tubes to help shape the wrap backside to prevent rehearsing wrong reps? Um, you can do that. I, tip, I don't use that item that you're talking about. Um, I will use like a plunger on the ground and I will just put that where the dog um, 
wants to take off naturally just so that they can't take off there. Um, I like to use that because if you get lucky enough, the number cone will land in that spot on an actual course to prevent the dog from taking off. Um, but again, it is a prevention. It's not a fix. So if you want to prevent the dog from rehearsing it poorly, absolutely. If you prevent long enough, obviously the behavior is going to stick and it's, it's going to be better. Um, but it's not necessarily going to fix it. I think being able to go in and teach them with your body language, because then I can do that on any jump at any time, and I don't need an apparatus. So I would do a bit of both. It's not like a one thing answer. And I think that's important for anything in agility. I think people just want like a quick fix, or they just want that like one answer. And then that's just how it goes. But that's not how it works. You have to do different things for different dogs, sometimes different things for the same dog, depending on how things are developing. The most important thing that you need to know about raising an agility dog or training agility dog is recognizing holes or problems before they become a thing. And I think that's something that I've learned because I've trained so many dogs myself and I've, I've helped train so many other people's dogs is when I see a glimmer of a hole happening, I am on top of it right away. So it never, never develops into something. So you don't have to do these major fixes. So, um, but every dog's going to have those things. Every There's dog, be things my dogs, come. like I get obsessive about training some things like throttles, for example, I trained tons of throttles like a year ago. And then my dog wanted to stop taking jumps front side. But instead of having a meltdown about it, I just practice front side jumps and built that reward a little bit. And then I went back into throttles and I yeah. just worked back and forth. So, you, you know, it's not a big deal. You just have to be ready for it. Uh, Melinda Miller, does it matter if you start teaching with a winged jump or a non-winged jump? Um, it's, uh, yeah, it does matter. Teaching with a winged jump is uh, better if you're going to do backsides. Um, I don't know what organizations you you um, work in, but uh, here in Canada, um, most of the organizations that I compete in, um, you are not allowed to have a backside jump on course if it's not a wing jump. Um, in fact, um, at my school, um, we don't even use wingless jumps here. They're all wing jumps. Um, at most of the time, most of the competitions we go to here, wing wingless jumps um, aren't really used very much. I know that's not the case for all organizations, uh, but for most of them here that we do in, we don't we don't use wing jump wingless jumps very much. Some really great questions coming in here in the chat. So okay. if you have a question about uh, your agility training, now would be the time to ask it. Lilia asks, how do you prevent patterning in a session, particularly between backside and front side, trying to do a back uh, when you ask for a front, do you sometimes have them jump the front in a session as well? That is a great question. Absolutely. Um, and I think that that's really, really important. So when you're um, practicing and you're trying to strengthen the skill, don't forget to go back and pr practice like the um, counter behavior to that. So if you're doing a lot of backside work, make sure you're doing a lot of front side work. Um, and if your dog's like more prone to doing one thing, then just make sure that you're not like working it too much so that that really strengthens and then other things um, they start to weaken. Um, but yeah, definitely some front side stuff as well. Nicole Scott asks, do you ever use the upright in a strategic location for the backside slice? Yes, I can show you that if you want. Uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. And okay. then you can come back. Yeah, uh, it's easy. I, it's you know, really let's, hard let's to make explain. a note of that. And then we can jump because yeah, yeah. we'll answer a couple more uh, questions and then we can go right into the training. Yeah, I will definitely show you that. Yeah, um, Nicole. That's a good question. Uh, Agile Border Terriers. Uh, uh, where do you get that net and uh, what exactly is it? It looks like semi-flexible, but I can't figure yeah. out what it is. Yeah. Um, I actually got it in the States, believe it or not, um, at uh, Home Depot. It's just like fencing and it was on a roll. It's like chicken, almost like chicken yeah, fencing. Yeah, it's not like chicken wire. I, I can bring it closer but it's to like, the camera. It's kind of like chicken wire uh, for your garden, uh, but it's it's rubber coated. It's so it's not, coated. it doesn't have those sharp yeah, edges. Yeah, there's no sharp edges. I don't know, can you guys yeah. see it? Maybe not, eh? This one's the bent one that just got in an accident. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's four feet long, maybe a little bit longer, maybe five feet long. Um, but it's flexible, so you can kind of bend it, and then you can just sort of stand it up. My, I've had mine for years now, but they've been a little bit through the war. They need to sort of be re rebent a little bit but um yeah you can just get them out that you know i have to use this specifically but personally i find that i like using this versus like a jump wing or something that's more obvious i try to use something that's discreet that the dog doesn't necessarily know is there all of the time because again they become dependent on it but this is um there enough that if the dog runs into it or something they're not going to get hurt so you have to use something that's safe uh but yeah i just got this at home depot it's not it's nothing special. It costs like fourteen dollars or something. But for what all a of handy them. tool. Yeah. Um Love My Cardi Kids uh, asks. 
What's the purpose of having them square up instead of allowing a slice? Really good question. Um, so the reason why we teach two different behaviors is relative to where you want the dog to go next. So the way that I handle an agility is I try to affect the dog's takeoff spot so that when they land, they're landing in a direction that helps them to understand what the next obstacle would be. When your dog approaches the backside of a jump, naturally they're going to want to slice across the bar. So um, let me show you. Uh, I, need, I need to stand. I need to stand and talk. I need to jump. Okay. Can you move over? And I'll, oh, yeah. I'll answer this yes. one. Uh, like I just, oh, are you going to yeah. over there? I can, okay. I'll answer this question. I'll show you. you. And that. then, Nicole, I'll talk about the placement of the thing. I just, uh, I, and it's then easier. we've got a question from Crenton 100 and uh, Sally Peters. But we can, we'll can, we definitely come back to those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're going to head over? Yeah. Okay. Let's head on over. <laughs> okay. So, if I'm a dog and I'm going to the back side of the jump, and I take off here, I'll go this side so you can see me better. I'm coming around the back side of the jump. Naturally, I'm gonna take off from this spot, okay? If I take off from this spot, hold on. Dogs always jump um, in the direction of like, if you were to like toss a marble over the, um, over the jump, like always in a straight line. So if they take off here, they're going to land here. Dogs, unfortunately for us, can't magically take off here and land here. It doesn't work. The only way you can get this as your landing spot is if you change the direction of the jump. So always imagine that this is the way that the dog jumps. So why this is important. So say for example, I wanted to come to the back side of the jump and I wanted to go that way next. If she lands over here, I'm now wasting all of this yardage for her to do her turning and then head back in the other direction. What I want for my dog to do is come in, make her turn before the jump, so when she lands, I have very little yardage on the landing side and we're already headed to where I need to go. So that's why controlling the takeoff is so important. The other thing that I didn't really talk about but I think it's sort of being topical is I use a lot of V-sets in my training. So if I want to change my dog's um, takeoff spot, I will go and handle from my dog's takeoff spot so they can't take off from there. So if I wanted her to take off here, but naturally, depending on where the course was, she wanted to come to like take off from here, for example, I would come in, I would take up this space, it would cause her to go around me, take off where I want, and then boom, there I go. So everything is controlled on the takeoff side of an obstacle, not the landing side. You're gonna get way faster times, um, you're going to get less bars because now the dog can tell where they're going before they take off and um, you're going to get more efficient lines as well. So that's why it's important. So again, dogs naturally want to take the jump on a slice, which could work to your advantage if a slice is what you want. But if you want the dog to wrap, you need to then change the dog's takeoff spot to there. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Nicole's question, if you have a dog that is having trouble with backside slices and you have a dog that's coming in and they're knocking the upright because they're hugging too tight, what you can do is put your um, bar about here. So when they come around, they can't take the jump and they have to move out a little bit to go through the jump. If, uh, it's better on the landing side rather than the takeoff spot because it's what I said before. I certainly could put it here so that the dog can't take off there, but I'll have to use it there forever. So when I put it on this side, it can, um, it can really help. So, and it's obviously size dependent, but this is where I would put it for a dog that has that trouble. I'm guessing that's what your trouble is since I kind of know your dogs and they probably just don't want to waste any time in the air. They just want to get on the flat as much as they can to get as much speed, but that's, um, that's where I would put it. <laughs> I love teaching Stand with back. a stick. She's dangerous, folks. I like uh, teaching with a stick. A couple other great questions. Uh, Sally Peters asks. I notice when you're warming uh, Levi up, you use a hup cue for, just for taking the front side of the jump. I want my dog to take the jump, even if I don't give a verbal. Excuse me, give a verbal cue. Um. I usually use a verbal cue in my jumps. Um. Because um, this could be like a whole other live stream. If I have uh, jumps that are in flow on a course, then I don't always give jump cues for every single um, 
Oh, there's the light. <laughs> Hello. Um, oh, I just blinded myself. Now I see like a bunch of white circles. <laughs> um, when I'm doing a course and there's a bunch of jumps that are like in a row and the jumps are really obvious, I don't necessarily give a jump cue for every single jump. But if I say, uh, for my own dogs, if I say hop or jump or whatever, it means that I want my dog to take the jump in um, <laughs> collection. Or sorry. I lie. Extension. I want them to jump long. If I say dig, 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 I want them to take it with a ton of collection. If I say easy, then I want them just to take it with a little bit of collection. Um, but being able to have a specific word, it helps them to determine which one that I want. Uh, to be truthful, because when I was working with Levi, I don't have any idea what his jump cue command is. So I was just trying to get him to go over the jump. But I love how observant you're being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, um, I will do some offering of the jump. So I teach a lot of things. Um, uh, with offering the jump for sure. But then once I started get going with my commands and I start to teach things um, more specifically, uh, I didn't say this earlier, but when you're teaching this stuff, the verbal is like the last thing that you should add. So I always teach the behavior first and then I will add the verbal command to it after. One of my biggest pet peeves, so verbals, for those of you who are in agility, verbals are like super popular right now and I love them I I'm right on board with them but the thing that I cannot stand the most is when people have all of these verbals and they have shitty handling to back it up and then people get mad at their dogs because they give all these crazy verbals but then their body language is so blatantly saying a different thing so really make sure that you are kind to your dog and that you are making sure that if you're going to be giving verbal commands that you do have proper positional cue to back it up. Now that's not to say that sometimes I'm going to stand in like the same location. Like with beeline, I was standing in a location where it could be front side jump or it could be backside jump. And I was making her figure out the verbals. But if I'm running on course, I'm not going to like purposely run in a poor direction and then give her a verbal for something else. I want to try to be as helpful as I possibly can. Um, um, so don't get so wound up on verbals that you aren't doing good handling to back it up because you could run into trouble. Quick reminder, that's why this is called After Hours Agility, because of that language that you just heard. Oh, uh, sorry. Things get a little blue. Guys, I get very passionate. After 10 I get very passionate. at night here. Yeah. Um, another question, actually, we've uh, talked a little bit about this before, but I think it's an important question. Crenton 100, speaking about wings, I have the same jumps you have. Is there a reason the feet are on the outside, mine are on the inside by the cups? Yeah, it's to help the dogs to not take off poorly for the jumps. <laughs> Yeah. it's to help the dogs it, the dogs that we have a lot of dogs that like to hug the wings really tight and then take off uh, so the wings just kind of make them go a little bit deeper um, I will say though that um, one thing that I try to avoid when training my own dogs in the foundation stages is I don't do a lot of wing wraps I do a little bit for sure but if I'm going to be teaching like wrapping or tight turns I will do it on um, like a post a pole or something like this where the dog's actually turning really tight I try not to rehearse the ton of like tight wing wraps because um, it can affect your dog's uh, backside performance later on. Lilia, is there something that we can use next to the jump that could simulate a wing? I have to transport some equipment uh, to a field most of the time that, and I wouldn't be able to fit a wing in my car. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you can probably make a little attachments to go onto the wing pretty easily. They do not need to be fancy or um, maybe bring some pylons with you and place them beside the um, wings of the jumps or sorry standards of the jumps just so that the dog has to go around it um yeah anything you could put barrels there uh, not, you're obviously not going to get barrels <laughs> I don't in, your car. in your car uh, but yeah. if there's like garbage cans around or something like that it doesn't really matter what it is i would just put something that the dog has to go around mm -hmm. um yeah have? i guess that the other thing, thing i just want to mention as well is um ken briefly um uh, mentioned about my Patreon page. For those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a, a monthly subscription. So um, I wanted to, to uh, offer online classes forever, but um, I have such a busy schedule that it's sort of difficult for me to offer it on a regular basis. Um, but I teach about 16 agility classes in-house here a week, um, and I spend hours a week coming up with brand new lesson plans, and I'm a little bit crazy, and I love to make brand new lesson plans up <laughs> she said it, not me. <laughs> I love to make brand new lessons up every week fresh. So I don't reuse lessons. I try to make them up new. And my lessons are all based on what my students need. So, you know, I watch what they do. 
the, you know, that week. And then I, I build the next week off of what they're doing. Or if I have students that are um, preparing for upcoming seminars, I have an international class of a bunch of people who are trying out for, for Team Canada this, mm -hmm. this year. Um, so it's all about preparation. So um, this Patreon page basically gives you access to uh, three levels of my agility classes. If you buy the top tier, which is about 50 bucks a month um, or um so that gives you my starters and advanced classes that gives you access to my master's classes, lesson plans, and it gives you access to my international class as well. Or you can um, buy the second tier down, which would be starters and advanced and masters. Or if you just have a beginner dog, you could just do the starters and advanced. So I upload new lesson plans every single Monday. They have um, explanations and stuff on them. And as often as I can, I'll post video examples as well. Um, but the cool part is, is once a, mo once a month we get together and we do a um, video lesson together where um, we talk to, to one another about, you know, common issues. I show some demonstrations like exactly what we do tonight, but it's more personalized to the people that are in it. So um, I think we can probably post the link for it. So you can go yep. and check that out if you want. And it is monthly. So if you sign up and like you're not into it or you get really busy or whatever, you can drop in and you can drop out uh, whenever you'd like to. Um, but uh, our second coaching call, because it, it's only a few months old, the whole program, um, the, such, the second session for video is tomorrow night, actually, at 630. So if you jump in tonight or tomorrow, then you can join us already for the, for the video lesson tomorrow. Yeah. So I says, yikes, I've taught my young puppy uh, many verbals and she's done great learning them. I'm nervous about the handling part. So loving working yeah. in the Patreon club to get all the handling courses. Yay. So, yeah, which is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, and the exciting part, call tomorrow. Yeah. I'm excited to get people into a call tomorrow. And that's why we thought mm -hmm. it would be uh, a good idea to uh, do our live stream tonight so that anybody who's looking for a little bit more of the, you know, the devil is in the details when it comes to agility. You know, it, it's the, you know, the, the tiniest changes can make the biggest differences. Yeah. And that's what's so exciting about the sport. And I think that's what I've noticed in your Patreon club is like some people reaching out to you with, with these like little questions and, and they're like, Oh, that totally Well, I think sense. that the dog training aspect, and I know someone said they really liked watching me work with Levi and just some of like the mindfulness. And I think that the dog training element is really helpful because, um, I think that there's a lot of agility trainers out there, but they don't necessarily have a lot of dog training, um, suggestions or experience and I think that that's something that um, I'm able to bring to the table if people are having issues we can talk about like the training of things because a lot of it is how you train stuff you know mm -hmm. you can be the best handler in the world but if you can't train the dog to do things you're not going to get very far you really truly need both parts you need to be a good handler but you also need to be able to train skills as well and the slower handler you are or the less experienced you are or whatever the better you can train your dog the more your dog can cover your butt right so important yes and uh, with unless that you're said, falling on your butt, unless you're getting run run into, yeah. Right? And then it's sort of you do realize when we get off this live stream, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna train Levi again. <laughs> I know you will. Sure I gonna... know you will. We won't leave this building without <laughs> without him knowing exactly what you yeah. want from him. We're in overtime now, so uh, I think this is a great place to uh, end things off. Uh, check out the link in the chat if you would like to become a member of the McCann Agility Coaching Club. A couple of huge thank yous tonight. As always, we need a big thank you to Dan the moderator man, Luton. We also need a big thank you to instructor Kim and Levi. You can see them in the background there. Super huge thank you to Kim for loaning us her uh, beautiful Border Collie to do some of that uh, foundation yeah, stuff awesome. with her. Uh, with no further ado, I want to wish you guys uh, well. Thank you for watching. I'm Ken. I'm Kale. Happy training, guys. Thanks for joining us, guys.